just the first page of it. Uh, we've got to get, we're ready to start worship. So we've just got to, yes, just change my order back. Just that first part. Yep. Yeah. And then, are we okay on coming in? Well, Bill, women all. Yeah, Bill, women all. Yep, we did that. Yep. Okay. And so, organize your music because we have to start the prayer. And I'm sorry, we shouldn't have done that. The bells. It's time to start. The when your music is in order, yeah. Facebook Live 
and our church website to be viewed at a time that works for your family during the week of Christmas. So we're pre-taping it. We'll be putting it on Facebook, uh, the church Facebook. We'll be putting it on our website so that at your convenience on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, you can pull that up. And if you have the right wires, you can even hook it right up to your, uh, from your computer to your television. Anyway, that will be available to be viewed at your convenience during the week of Christmas. The church office is staffed Monday through Friday this week ahead. Call if you need Andy or the pastors. I'll be working at the church office on Wednesday and Thursday this week and available by phone or email all week long. Finally, we got our shipment of Christ in Our Home devotional. We finally uh, got it just this last week. So call the church office if you want to stop by and pick that up. We extend sympathy to the family and friends of three of our members who died this past week. On Tuesday, a funeral will be held for Juanita Martin. On Wednesday, a funeral will be held for Bess Barnick. On Thursday, a funeral will be held for Carol Lackey. Those will all take place at the Brustheitner Funeral Home, and details for those services can be found on the Brustheitner website. Our prayers are with all of their families. Today is the third week, is the third Sunday, and we begin the third week in the season of Advent. Today we'll be lighting three candles. Uh, two purple and one pink if you're at home and have your home Advent wreath. This one doesn't have a pink on it, but just so you know, at home that's what we would be lighting. And our worship continues now then with the lighting of the Advent wreath, singing verse 3 of hymn 240 in the red hymnal.
gifted the world with hope. By your Holy Spirit, fill us with new life and hope. May we be like Mary, willing to serve you, willing to bear witness to your promise. Amen. The Bible story for today comes from Luke chapter 1, starting with the 39th verse. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in Elizabeth's womb. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what has been spoken to her by the Lord. Mary answered with a song. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the loneliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He brought down the powerful from their thrones, lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Mary. Now, not this Mary, 
But Mary, the one we read about in our Bible story, Mary had a fiancé named Joseph, and they both lived in the city of Nazareth. They were engaged to be married in what was most likely an arranged marriage, arranged by their parents. Mary was still living with her parents at that time until Joseph and she were to be married. And then after the marriage, she would move into the home probably attached to Joseph's carpentry shop. But before that could happen, Mary got pregnant. And instead of shuttling Mary away to a home for unwed mothers, Mary was instead sent to the hill country to stay with her much older cousin, Elizabeth. Oh, Elizabeth was the perfect pairing for Mary. Not only was she herself pregnant, but she was kind of a protective mother figure to this young girl. I can just picture what it must have been like when Mary arrived at the home then of Elizabeth and Zachariah. Elizabeth probably got a comfortable cushion by the fire for Mary, who had traveled by foot to the hill country. Must have gotten her a pitcher of water. And then she probably sat down and said, Oh, cousin, cousin, it's so wonderful to see you. Make yourself at home. Stay as long as you want. Now sit here and fill me in on all the news. What's new in Nazareth? What's the news? Mary explained to Elizabeth that the angel Gabriel had visited her from God and asked her to carry inside of her the Savior of the world. Then Mary tells her cousin that she said a very radical, powerful yes to God who asked her to carry the Savior, that she was willing to give birth to the Son of God. And then Mary broke into song. We often call it the Magnificat. And we know the words, especially because we sing during Lent, hold an evening prayer. One translation says, my soul gives glory to God. What God has done will never be forgotten, she sang. God showed his strength, scattered the power, knocks the tyrants and the terrible rulers off their horses, pulls victims up out of the mud, the starving will sit down at a banquet while the callous rich people are left hungry out in the cold. And we often think of Mary's song as warm and fuzzy, singing to her older cousin. But it is just as radical as that yes that young Mary gave to God when he asked her, will you give birth to the Savior of the world? Mary's song Mary's sermon, she's really preaching to us, it is revolutionary. She sits there with her cousin, Elizabeth, and sings of a God who has a heart for people who have nothing. Mary does not sing a verse that we in our society would often think is sung. Mary does not sing, God only loves and provides for those who work for a living not what song. Mary radically sings that God will lift up those who are cast aside by society. God will scatter those who think too highly of themselves. God feeds the empty and sends the greedy, selfish people away with nothing. This is revolutionary because Mary proclaims God has bias. God is on the side of the poor, the hurting, the downtrodden. Too many people think that the rich who have a lot have extra blessings. Mary sings the exact opposite. She sings of a revolution. Mary's words are not tender and mild. They are words that are sung as a sermon to us yet today to challenge us. They are words that are meant to give hope and lift up those who are ignored and pushed down. Words that are meant to inspire us yet today to action, to change the world.
the world. Now, for a long time, this song was outlawed in the country of Guatemala because the leaders there feared that if the people heard these words, this song of Mary, that it would stir people up to an uprising. They were afraid that if people realized that Jesus is Lord and the mean kings and the emperors are not, according to Mary, God is not on the side of the leaders. And they were afraid of what would happen if people heard these words because they should be a call to action. Mary Stein explains why Jesus came to the earth. Her song says, in Jesus, God will lift up those who are lowly. In Jesus, God will show us that power does not come from control or ridicule, but true authority in the eyes of God comes from service and love and freedom. In Jesus, God will fill up the hungry and set people free. God is calling us now, 2,000 years later, to complete what was begun in Jesus. Mary's song is a reminder for us that we are called to join together with God on the side of the hungry and the oppressed, the side of those who are often pushed aside and ignored. A story. A story from Germany. There's a Holocaust Museum in Dachau concentration camp that tells some of the story of the horrors that happened there at the hands of Hitler and the Nazis. In the museum, a huge photograph is hung that was taken inside Dachau concentration camp. A photograph of a mother with her daughter standing in front of her in line to go into the gas chambers. The child is there in front of the mother and probably has no idea what's going to happen. The mother, though, standing behind the child, seems to have a sense of the helplessness she has to stop the tragedy, what's ahead for them. So in her helplessness, the photograph shows the mother performing the only act of love she has left in her. She has placed her hand over her daughter's eyes so the child won't see the horrors of what lies ahead. The museum curators have said that many guests in the museum stop and pause a long time in front of that photo as if they can begin to feel the pain of the mother and deep inside, it's as each, it's as if each person looking at that photo says, oh God, don't let that be all that there is. Mary's song reminds us that the tragedies and sorrow and brokenness of this world is not all that there is. Christmas itself says that the suffering in this world does not get to have the last word. God's love enough is going to be born into this world. On Christmas Eve. I believe in Christmas. I believe in God's good news. Christmas reminds me that God brings hope in the midst of the despair. God brings healing in the midst of hurt. That God brings peace in the midst of strife. God brings comfort in the midst of grief. God brings companionship to the lonely. God, as Mary sings, brings power to the weak and justice for the downtrodden. And most of all, I believe that God brings new life in the midst of death. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom. Let it be here on earth, as God would have it. Amen.
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Now is the time in worship when we normally would collect our our gifts this morning are one way we can trust God, even in a world that seems very scary. When we give the gift of an offering, we are letting go of the thinking that we are on our own in this world. As people of God, we have a grace-filled dependence upon God. Let us gather our gifts together, offer them to God in gratitude and praise. You're always able to make donations by visiting the Good Shepherd website, clicking online giving. You can always also put your offering in the mail and send it directly to the church. We thank you today, as always, for the offerings you provide for Good Shepherd Church. Thank you.
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and joy and serve the Lord.